And that was, the strategy was to start with him and work their way up to Rolf. Rolf has been served with a subpoena. Here's an example of how the press won't talk about this. When Rolf went on Meet the Press uh, a few months ago, he was served with a subpoena on his way in, and CNN and ABC caught this on film. You know? What they, they put the subpoena on his arm and he let it fall off, that kind of thing. They, not a word. Never reported. Right? Not a story. Not, in, not important. I'm sorry. Okay? That's not complicated. That's a story. The problem isn't denial. The problem isn't complexity. The problem is something else. Okay? Something else. And, and, and if I could just, for a minute, talk about the notion of conspiracy theory. All right? Because I think this has something to do with what's going on. This is not the only story that has been declared off limits through application of that epithet, conspiracy theory. You raise a question about 9-11, any question, right? That's a conspiracy theory. Go back in time a little bit. You raise any questions about the October surprise in 1980? It's conspiracy theory. You look at Gary Webb's work on the CIA's drug dealing in the industry, conspiracy theory. Anything about the Oklahoma City bombing, anything about Iran-Contra, any questions, it's a conspiracy theory, okay? Now, I was interested, having been the victim of this, right, over and over and over again, this book was completely, this is my book, came out in 2005, a reputable publisher, Basic Books, fooled again. I, as the expression goes, I couldn't get arrested. Oh, well, I probably could get arrested, but I couldn't get any media coverage, I couldn't get any interviews on NPR, uh, and I'd been interviewed many times on NPR about other things, got no reviews, it was completely blacked out. The Philadelphia NPR station, WHYY, refused to run paid ads for the book because they said they wouldn't advertise just any book. They wouldn't advertise Mein Kampf, for example. They actually said that. Uh, yes. Oh, my goodness. Okay. So, you know, we all know what it's like to run up against that charge, conspiracy theory. So I was interested. What? Where did that come from? You know, when did that become the cudgel of choice? You know, when did that become the primary way to chill inquiry, as opposed to shooting a reporter in the head, which is really sloppy, you know, like in Iran or Russia? When did that become the way to to uh, declare a story off limits? And it actually started. You can you can do a search on. Uh, There's a rhetorical question. Do you want? Hey, what did your publisher say? My publisher was, not only was my publisher all dumbstruck, they would never had this experience before. I even got some money from a, a kind woman in California to hire my own publicist. And this woman uh, was also, also Paul Krugman's publicist, Joe Wilson's publicist. She'd never had an experience like this. Never. It was, it was unprecedented to them both. And, and they were, never went public with it? Well, what are you going to say? I mean, how... how is, a few well, you know, they're not... <clears throat> Activists, you know what I mean? They're in publicity, so it's not that going to get anywhere doing that. But it did amaze them. Uh, if you go, you know, you can you can research this. You go to the New York Times archive or the Time Magazine archive, and you discover that conspiracy theory first enters journalistic discourse, and it's widely used in the late '60s. And it's after uh, books come out questioning the Warren Commission report. This Mark Lane's book. Edward G. Epstein's book. Now, these aren't really very good books. That's beside the point. It just so happens that there's a, a declassified memo from uh, April 1st, 1967, a C from the CIA to all stations uh, worldwide, uh, discussing the problem of these books. You know? The problem is there are these books impugning the Warren Commission, which is a respectable blah, blah, blah. The solution is to use our propaganda assets and friends in the media, that's a quote, to discredit the work of these conspiracy theorists by making the following five arguments. And you've heard these arguments. Oh, if this was happening, someone would have talked. How many times have you heard that? Right? Well, a lot of people have talked about election fraud, but they're not people. You know what I mean? They're unpersons. Right. And it, the point is that this was a, a systematic introduction into the discourse of journalism of this phrase, conspiracy theory, and from then on, it's used over and over and over and over again, especially from Reagan's election on. And it really picks up with the October surprise, which, by the way, that's, that's been proven. You know, that happened. 
the Reagan team went and negotiated with the Iranians before the election in 1980, and they got them to hang on to the hostages till after Reagan won. That's not, you know, Bob Perry, Robert Perry, among other journalists, has proven this. It's been proven. That's not, you know, but, you know, if you take a look, you, you can, with digital communication, one good thing is you can research this stuff, you know, in the twinkling of an eye, and it's, you can see the phrase used over and over and over and over again. Uh, that, I, think that, I think that in some way there is a connection there. I think that the mainstream press, the New York Times, the Washington Post, Newsweek Time, you name it, they won't cover this issue. They won't discuss it. You could count on the fingers of one hand the number of times the New York Times has covered this issue. The thanks to Bob, they did one, one really good piece on Ohio once. But they discuss video games on a weekly basis, right? right. But the, you know the fundamental mechanism for, for democracy they won't they won't discuss because it's a conspiracy theory. I'll, I'll just make one last observation. When when this book came out, okay, and I'm not the only one this happened to. Bobby Kennedy went through the same thing because he did two great articles on this problem for Rolling Stone, okay. And Steve Freeman can tell stories like this. All the people who tried to make the argument have run into this. The mainstream press was completely silent, sphinx-like, nothing, not a word. The left press attacked me. The left press attacked Bobby Kennedy. 